Hello my friends, I'm Clover, and this is Genuinely Approachable Sudoku, and today we are solving Tilting Crop Mills by Philip Newman. This is a Kropke pair Sudoku, so we're placing the digits 1 through 9 once each in each row, each column, and each outlined 3x3 three three region. And then we also have some black and white dots in the grid, so wherever you see a black dot, the digits on either side of the dot are in a 1 to 2 ratio, meaning that one of them is twice as large as the other. And wherever you see a white dot, the digits on either side of it are consecutive, so one of them is one greater or less than the other. And not all dots have necessarily been given, there might be other pairs elsewhere in the grid that have this relationship that haven't been marked, so you only know anything about the pairs that have been marked. This is a really beautiful visual theme, by the way. This is super impressive, even by Philip's standards. Um, I like the kind of tilted square, and even more interestingly, the fact that we only have three distinct givens, ones, threes, and sevens. So let's start with some of our givens. So one is only in a one to two ratio with two. Three is only in a one to two ratio with... Um, with six, so we need to put sixes on black dots next to our threes. One is only consecutive with two, so I'm going to put a two there. And that's all I see that's instantly restricted. Three is next to either two or four, but there's already a two in the column, so that's going to be a four. And then same here, there's already a two in the row, so that has to be a four to go next to the three. The next thing that catches my eye is this column. There is only one pair of digits remaining that have a 1 to 2 relationship, and that's 4 and 8, placing 5 and 9 here and here to finish the column. In this column, I need 5, 6, 8, and 9. This could be either a 5, 6 pair or an 8, 9 pair at this point. This 3 has to be next to 2 or 4, so in this case it's going to be next to 4. And that tells us that this pair in a 1 to 2 ratio does not have a 3 or 6 and also does not have a 4, so it must be 1 and 2. And that makes these three digits 4, 7, and 8, making this a 7, 8 pair. Therefore, to finish the region, we need 5, 6, and 9 here. Those digits in the column have to be 1 and 2, and these are going to be 5 and 9. Now that we have a 2 here, this 3 can't go next to 2, so that must be a 4, making that an 8 because it can't be a 2, and that resolves this 4, 8 pair. I know now that a 1 is going to be in one of those cells. Here, um, this cell, <laughs> so the, the digits that can ever go on a black dot are 1, 2, 4, 8, 3, and 6. And this actually sees 1, 4, 8, 3, and 6. So this must be a 2. And it can't be next to a 1, so that's going to be, or it can't be next to a 4, so that's going to be a 1. So that's a 2 and a 1. I need a 1 in one of those cells. This is actually a hidden 3, because I have four threes here looking into the central region. I could have gotten that a lot earlier. It's in a 1 to 2 ratio with 6, and this is going to be either 2 or 4. And 6 is going to be next to either 5 or 7. How about right here? So the digits I still need in the column are 5, 7, 8, and 9. And so the pair that's consecutive here is either 7, 8, or 8, 9. And I don't know which yet. I put right here, um, I need a 4 in one of those cells, and these are some combo of 5, 7, and 9. I'm sure there's something straightforward I'm not seeing. Oh, I do see something. So I have a hidden 1 in this region because, or yeah, because I can't have a 1 here. 1 isn't next to 6. There's a 1 in this row already, so those aren't 1s. And then there's a 1 in this column, so that's not a 1. So that's going to be a 1. And then these are going to be from 2, 5, 7, and 9. In this column, I can't have a 1 here, so my 1 goes there. That's 5, 7, or 9, and it's not 7 because there's a 7 in the row already. That means our last digit remaining here is going to be an 8. This has to be either 2 or 4 to go next to the 3. In fact, it is a hidden 4 because I have 4s here and here, so this is the only position for 4 in this region. That tells us that the 4 goes right there. And these are 5, 7, and 9. There's a 7 in one of these cells, so that's definitely not going to be a 7. That's going to be either 5 or 7. That can't be a 4. Those are from 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, so this is the only position for 6 in the row. This is either a 2 with a 4, or a 4 with a 2 or 8. That's um, that's surprisingly unrestricted so far. 
one of these guys is going to be a one. That can't be a six. I'm just doing a little bit of cleanup right now. One of these has to be a two in the row, and that's going to be a five or nine. It can't be an eight because this is either seven and eight or eight and nine. Either way, it has an eight in it. So now I have a five, nine pair. I can eliminate nine from there. And in this row, this is now a 2-8 pair, meaning there's no 8 here, so that's not an 8-9 pair, it's a 5-6 pair, making these two 8 and 9. So my remaining digits in this region are going to be 1, 2, 5, and 7. So my only consecutive pair there, in fact, is 1, 2, making this a 5-7 pair. So there's my 1, there's my 2, that makes this an 8. And I need to place my 1 here, this is now going to be a 9, which resolves these three digits, and tells us that the 5 goes there. And that's not going to be a 9, so I have a 5, 6 pair here, making that a 7, 8, and 7. That's now an 8 and a 7, which resolves that. 9, 8, and 7. Perfect. And the rest of it should just be classic Sudoku. That 4 makes this an 8. The 4 is in a pair with a 2 there. And the only digit that can be is a 2. Here I need a 9 in the column, and then I need a 5 there, and that should take care of everything. Perfect. And that is how you solve Philip Newman's lovely tilting crop mills. Hope you guys liked that one. The link to solve it yourself is in the description of this video. And I will see you again in three days.